All right then folks, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we have something quite exciting. We have an epic barrel-proof whiskey blind off. We will get these whiskeys, we will put them in the glasses, we will make sure I have no idea which is which, and then we will delve in and blind them, and then score them and put them in a beautiful order, one through four. With that being said, run the video. Alrighty then, folks. Thank you for tuning in to another new and exciting episode of The Whiskey Cove. Time for a shameless plug, I guess. We're getting close to 5,000 subscribers. If you are not already a subscriber, and I'm sure many of you out there are already, and it's probably tied a little bit with this spiel, but we're getting oh so close to that mark. And as soon as we get there, we'll do the free 5,000 giveaway. What is that 5,000 giveaway? All the uh, FAQs, if you like, are down in the description below, so go and check that out after the video. Uh, you can win one of six bottles, you can win a Well Antique 107, you can win a Willet Four Year Rye, you can win an Early Times Brown Foreman Black Top Bottled in Bond, and then lastly, an Old Forester Barrel Strength Single Barrel. Two things you need to do. You need to be a subscriber, 100%. And then secondly, you need to go over to the Whiskey Coast website. The link, again, is down in the description. And then just sign up for the free lottery giveaway. As soon as we hit 5,000 subscribers, we'll do a 5,000 subscriber giveaway, a live event. So definitely pay attention to see if your name is Paul there as well. Let's get these bottles out of here, and then let's get on with the show. So, we picked these four bottles because I think that they represent a lot of different corners of the bourbon world. You have Buffalo Trace's uh, Buffalo and Trace Antique Collection with George T. Stagg. You have Elijah Craig from Heaven Hill there in Bardstown, Kentucky. From Clermont, Kentucky, you have Jim Bean Buckers. And then lastly, uh, from Louisville, Kentucky, you have Bomb Burgers. You're probably wondering why I didn't put the Russell single Rick House in this lineup if, for so you folks at home who watch the channel. And I think that we might see something like that towards the end of the year here uh, so I didn't want to do anything too repetitive so we included the Bookers and the Elijah Craig here so what we'll do we'll get these whiskies we'll get them out of the contents that they are in into glasses uh, my wife will shuffle them up so they are completely blind and then we'll get on with the tasting but just for you folks at home so you know exactly what we are tasting we are going with the George T Stag 20 uh, 22 release the 69.35 percent ABV we're actually using the Elijah Craig C919 because this is definitely a favorite of mine and it definitely needs to be good to be up into this lineup uh, the bookers that we are using is the 202102 the tag along batch when we did the bookers blind with the three bookers that we had this came out on top so it is the strongest representative that we have from bookers in this blind and then lastly we have the bomb burgers the 2023 bomb burgers that we did a review on lately and that we found that it was fantastic and that we loved so with that being said let's get these whiskeys in the glasses and let's do the spin all right then folks and when we are back and again like every time we do these blinds i must premise i have no idea which whiskey is in which glass here why did i want to do this blind today well i really wanted to try some of that george t stag and that bomb burgers again so uh yeah any excuse is a good excuse to try those whiskies so then what we will do we will start at your left and then finish at your right glass one two three and four uh, they have been labeled a b c and d and then i have the answer key in my pocket so then when we finish and get them in an order, we'll come back there and figure things out from there. So what we'll do is we'll start in glass one here. It's looking quite amber forward, like a darker amber, almost brown color in the glass there as well. It's leaving some whiskey streaks in the glass there, or for you beer drinkers at home, lacing. Uh, it looks quite appetizing. Let's go in for a nose here, glass one. It actually smells really nice and rich. They're all gonna smell very nice and rich for these barrel proof products from what I know them to be. Definitely has a, a, a bit of cherry there as well. Mm. Oh, Italian cream, vanilla wafer. Not much heat coming off the nose. Beautiful kind of, again, darker, like a darker cherry note, like a maraschino cherry. A little bit of pine wood there as well, that, that, that very effervescent pine note. All in all, very approachable, very decadent in the glass. It's going for a taste on glass one. As you can imagine, a little bit of proof on the palate here. It starts off with a very nice, 
dark molasses, brown sugar sweetness. And then uh, the peanut butter, butter and powder brittle takes over there as well. It's kind of like a bit of peanut butter brittle with some toasted chocolate on top. You bite into it and it hits you with that sweetness. Then that kind of peanut note takes over there as well. It is a little bit proofy, but it's not, uh, it doesn't drink incredibly crazy, nothing like that. But you, it does remind you that you are drinking a barrel proof product here. Uh, just going for one more taste to see if we can pick apart the finish here. It is so, so peanutty at the back end there. Kind of like a peanut shell drying out your palate with that peanut shell note. But so sweet, sweet caramel, a chocolate peanut. A peanut isn't necessarily my uh, top flavor or top note that I pick up in whiskeys. But when it's done like this, superb, absolutely phenomenal. Packaged in with all the other stuff, the vanillas, uh, the dark fruit, the chocolate, the toasted chocolate, the barrel char. Uh, it really does come together really nice there as well. So an excellent start by glass one here. And then let's move into glass two after we reset the palette here. Much like glass one, it's the same sort of color there, on the darker side of amber, if you like, touch of mahogany. It doesn't stick. It looks a little oily in the glass, but it doesn't stick to the glass, maybe as much as glass one there. Let's go in for a nose. <clears throat> also, so much barrel char on this. Again, I'm getting a cherry right there again, but maybe more of like a candied baking cherry on this. Definitely like a, can, like a sugar coated like cherry, uh, like, like more of like a candied cherry. I think like a, if you're familiar with the sweets called Haribo, one of the sweet, one of the packs that they do, they have sugar coated candy in there and there's a cherry sweet. Kind of has some of those vibes to it because it has like a green stem and then it has these cherries attached to it. So the green stem is almost like a little bit citrusy. You kind of have some of that in here as well. Plenty of barrel char, pillowy soft vanilla, vanilla notes there as well. Not proofy at all. It's just a very nice, a pleasant, sweet cherry forward experience with plenty of barrel char. Maybe a touch of citrus and some coconut there as well. Very inviting. Let's go in for a taste of glass two. So on the palate, you do get a couple of different things that are going on here. First up, it's not as sweet as the nose would suggest it on the palate. Some of those candier notes have gone away and you get a little bit more of a, like an express or bean chocolate note there as well. And maybe a little bit of the spice bitterness that would go with like chewing one of those express or chocolate beans that you can get from, uh, I think Trader Joe's and a bunch of other places do it as well. Uh, when that kind of note uh, kind of deteriorates or kind of slips away a little bit, kind of gently rocks you to sleep with a nice oakier note there. Kind of transitions a little bit more into drying your palate out a little bit. So that there's more of that like aged oak and a little bit of oak spice that goes along there as well. Really great showing so far from both of these glasses. There's not a bad whiskey in the house, as you can imagine. But let's reset the palate and then go into glass three here. That's true. Uh, just looking at it in the glass, it does have more mahogany qualities to it than maybe the other two. I felt like one or two had more uh, amber notes to it. Where this one is a, a, a shade darker, more of the brownie, or the browns and the mahogany colors to it. Again, just on the, it's, outlook, it's just out, looks outrageous in the glass. So thick and viscous. You could poke it with a needle and it wouldn't move at all. Uh, it's, uh, it looks beautiful in the glass. Let's go in for a nose here on glass three. Again, you know, for the third glass in a row, we're getting that beautiful cherry note. It's been a little different between these two. Maraschino cherry on glass one, candy bacon cherry style on glass two. I think it's kind of, I kind of <laughs> poof the mini. You kind of get the sweetness uh, of candy cherry, but the, the, the darker kind of a, uh, a deeper, darker cherry notes on the, uh, on this one, like you did on glass one. But then it's followed up with this beautiful vanilla 
uh, and I've used Italian cream already today and it kind of has that vibe, like a disarano, uh, punchy vanilla note with that there as well. It's very sweet on the nose, but it also has like an incredible oak backbone that just makes this the balance. It's all about balance in whiskey for me personally. I don't want something that's too hot. I don't want something that's too sweet. I don't want something that's too spicy. I don't want something that's too oaked. I want them all to be on the same field and I want to be able to smell and taste all of them parallel to each other. And this kind of has that going on in this glass. It's very inviting, it's beautiful, it's syrupy, it's breakfast syrup, it's waffles and pancakes, uh, it's, it's a cherry on chocolate dessert, it's a vanilla ice cream cone at your favorite ice cream parlor, it's everything that you love in life in the glass on the nose. Can it stack up in the palate? Let's go and see. Glass three. First impressions, it is beautifully pancake syrupy sweet. As soon as you taste it, uh, so much barrel char, toasted, uh, toasted barrel notes there as well. I've said on the channel before, go and do a whiskey tour and try it out. Old Forest is a fantastic one for this because they toast the barrel in front of you and then they roll it away. You can smell almost like the caramelized sugar in the wood and you're getting that with this whiskey. There's a lot more oak presence with this one. It's telling me it has more age because it kind of is hitting my palate a lot more. It's kind of uh, the oak tannins are I've clenched onto my palate and they dig, they're, they're digging their claws in, so to speak. And I generally get that uh, from aged whiskey. So that's a bit of a tell for me there as well. It's just a beautiful, uh, a balanced experience throughout. A lot of the, all, almost all of those flavors that we mentioned on the nose transition through in the palate. And they just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It doesn't really fall off and it gets to the finish and they all just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, what I'm saying, the finish is fantastic. It's long, it's balanced. Excellent whiskey. Can't say enough good things about glass three. We could be here all day talking about glass three, so let's move swiftly on to glass four. Uh, looking at it in the glass, again, much like one and two, it is more on the amber side. Maybe also lighter, amber to gold, so to speak. But it's, uh, it definitely has more amber than gold. Uh, it looks a little uh, thin in the glass, but it does have some barrel presence and some oiliness there, which is always a good sign. Let's go in for a nose here. So it doesn't have as many of those barrel char, sweet wood caramelized notes, but then maybe some of the other ones had. It's definitely a little bit more apple forward, uh, stone fruit, uh, like a more green fruit forward, like a pear apple type notes. Something that you might more uh, resemble or something that you would expect more in like a single malt. A little bit of honey, a little bit of dusty oak that I'm picking up from this as well. Rick House oak, I like to call dusty oak. Again, uh, if you're a whiskey connoisseur, a whiskey fan, or aficionado, just anybody who likes whiskey, you have to do a tour uh, of a distillery that has a, a nice old Rick House. And as soon as you walk in, you, you, that dusty Rick House note, if you've never smelled it before, and you go and do a tour, now that I've told you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just smells like a wood that's just been sitting there for a long time. Uh, not quite in the elements of water or anything, but uh, exposed to air for a long period of time. Backed up again by those green pear and apple notes. Quite spicy. I wouldn't say super spicy, but it's definitely, I have to pull away every now and again because this really almost feels like a singeing the nose has. What type of spice? Definitely a high notes of cinnamon there as well. I wouldn't say nutmeg. Yeah, it has like a, a little bit of a candied like white sugar notes or maybe like a, those like fireball sweets. I can never remember the name of those sweets, but you know the ones I'm on about, those oblong red looking ones. This is more of that clear honey cane sugary sweetness as opposed to the barrel char with then those fruit notes. Let's go in for a taste on glass four here. So glass four definitely has more bite to it. You know, you know you're drinking a much more proofier whiskey. <laughs> proofier whiskey. I feel like I'm coming to tears here. I can't, can't get my words out. You're definitely drinking a more proofier whiskey or you feel like you're drinking a more proofier whiskey. 
because that pepper and almost like a chili-esque spice or horseradish spice, whatever your favorite spice is, is just digging into the tongue a little bit there. Not as well rounded, I guess, is what I'm saying, than these other three. It definitely has, uh, lacks the consistency of the flavors. It has more ebbs and flows. Uh, it, it leans more towards a spicier or more proofier palate. So if that is someone out there who kind of likes that, then I think you'll like glass four here as well. Let's go in for one more taste on glass four. The mouthfeel is actually pretty good on this, but it's just not like a barrel charred, darker flavors, rich mouthfeel is again, I just repeated myself a little bit here, uh, but it is a more like a cane sugary uh, fruit syrup, like a, a perfect analogy for you right now. I think they have them in the US, but they have cans, like canned fruit, and there's one that we have in the UK that's called like a canned fruit cocktail, and it's like pieces of pear, peach, apple, and cherry in it, uh, and they put them in and they put like a sugar syrup in there. And you can drain the sugar syrup out of there. And this is kind of what that tastes like. And then you get the poof punch that just uppercuts you in the jaw after you get that sweetness. Uh, it takes you on a bit of a ride, that's for sure. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll pause the camera now. Now that we've tasted through them, we'll go back through a few that we're unsure of, and then we'll come back and hopefully I have them in an order for you folks at home. All right then folks, and we are back. And after much deliberation, I think we have them in an order. There was two again that I wasn't really sure which way I could go on it. Uh, but ultimately, I think, I think I know which one's which. Okay, so let's just start with last place, fourth place, if you like, uh, which was this class. Uh, it, I could see why people would like this whiskey. It's just not my palate. And if you're someone who watches the channel, you kind of know what my palate I feel like is by now. I like the dark, richer, sweeter notes, but just has the balance of just everything. I guess I'm a little bit greedy in that aspect. I want the whiskey to have really good balance throughout. But heck, that's what makes, that's what makes a great whiskey uh, or makes an excellent whiskey from a great whiskey. Is that they're able to get that balance. You're able to taste that sweetness. You're able to taste that spice, that oak note. Uh, you're able to taste that barrel char and it's consistent through the whiskey and it doesn't ebb and flow. It has really high levels of flavor throughout. So that's why this one came in last because I felt like although it had a lot of spice and uh, although it had some of the uh, citrusy or apple or uh, green fruit sugar sweetness, it just wasn't a consistency or it didn't have the consistency across. So let's just see what this was, glass four. This was C for Charlie. And if I can look at my sheet that my wife gave me that is good wow that is not what i was expecting wow that was uh is that c i think that's c i know i've been drinking barrel pros but i'm pretty sure that's a c can't be anything else so this was a surprise i guess so i guess it was a surprise uh this was the uh elijah craig c919 this sh yeah i'm not gonna say too much because this, that's the shock uh, in last place because I felt like this might have been a bit of a dark horse to get one here today. However, uh, yeah, maybe it's just how it's changed over time. Heck, up against these whiskies, it was always going to be a tough ask. Uh, but yeah, a little bit spiky in some of those flavors, a little bit too proofy, not as rounded as these other three. Yeah, that's a bit of a shock. Uh, however, let the show must go on. So let's find out what glass three was, which ultimately was glass one. Uh, and I don't know what anything is anymore, so let's just get into it. Uh, and that, w why do we choose glass one as number three? Yes, uh, although I don't quite like the nutty or peanut note in a whiskey as much, I think it did that really well because it was sandwiched in some other excellent flavors. But at the end of the day, it kind of had a lot of the same flavors as glass two did, but glass two didn't have that peanut note. So it was very close. And I mean, on a different day, we could have gone for something else. It's just kind of how we felt today. Uh, so we did ultimately go for glass one, which was B for Bravo. I don't know what's what anymore. Uh, and that was Booker's. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, so I was expecting... So there's only two distilleries I ever get peanut notes from. Uh, one is Jim Beam. And then the other is Heaven Hill, but completely, uh, if I'm completely honest, and I didn't make any rush judgments in my thinking here uh, when I was lining these up, but I thought this was over here and I thought this was over there. Uh, Bookers has kind of surprised me today because uh, 
it doesn't do well for me generally. I always feel that it's, uh, it has more similarities, like more spiky notes, not as complete uh, as the uh, as this one, as Elijah Craig today. But I think that's a big takeaway from today is that maybe I need to dip my toe back into Booker's a little bit because this was the last batch I bought, and this is from 2021. So we'll just have to wait and see, and maybe we'll see a new Booker's here in the whiskey go. With that being said, let's find out what came in second and what came in first. So. We already know what came in first. That was glass three. This, these were all really good whiskies, but this was just, it's just another level. Uh, it just superseded anything that we tasted today. And I think I know what it is, but I'm not gonna guess. Let's just see the results. So glass two was A for Alpha, and that was the Bomb Burgers. A little bit of Santee resumed. Right here, so we did a review on this Bomb Burgers at, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago now. Depends when this video is posting. Um, never had Bomb Burgers before until I tried this one, and wow, what a whiskey. Uh, it was quite close to the Bookers today, which is, surprised me. I thought that this would be uh, clear of Bookers by quite a margin, but not today. I think it did an excellent job. I think just the, the little less ABV is probably what stole it in front of the Bookers and the lack of that peanut note but an excellent addition to the bookers. And this is considerably less ABV than the rest of them because this is uh, the 2023 release and this is 54% ABV and everything else is above 60. So it did a really good job at standing up in this barrel proof. But with that being said, um, George T. Stag 2022, is there a better whiskey on the market right now? Obviously that's debatable given everything is run by opinions when it comes to whiskey. But with my own palate, if you have the money, if you can splurge, if you can get this whiskey bottle from a, a reputable source, uh, and I mean that, and I don't just mean a, a store somewhere that has it for sale, because history would tell you that that doesn't always mean that the juice is in the bowl, is that what it is? But if for whatever reason you get this bottle, you need to buy it. I think, I think I would pay probably about five hundred dollars for this bottle again, just because how good it is. Uh, and hopefully my wife isn't watching this because uh, I spent a lot of money at Kentucky lately. And I can tell you now, actually, I spent $1,500 at Kentucky lately, in Kentucky. And I probably would have preferred to buy three of these bottles. So I should tell you everything you need to know. I think I bought like 25 bottles and some fantastic bottles, by the way. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. I'm not sure if it was so much of a learning experience for you as it was maybe to understand in my own palate and the, the thought process that I go through when drinking whiskies. So George T. Stagg was the clear favorite today. Let's not say more. Let's just enjoy the drink that I really wanted to get out to this point. So George T. Stagg was the winner today as we drink through the world's whiskies one glass at a time. Cheers. It's just so good.